I'll start. Hello, everybody. Lovely to see you. Welcome back, um, or welcome if this is your first time. I'm Mel Hauser, I use she, they pronouns, and I'm the executive director of Operations Belong. Welcome to Brain Club. Let me share screen, get us oriented to our conversation. Except I moved things while looking for things and now everything's in a different place. Okay, here we go. So tonight we will be taking a look at one of the principles of neuroinclusive culture, which is that um, we shift from that of um, focus on the individual to focus on the collective and figuring out how not only can I get my own access needs met, but how do I make sure I don't infringe upon yours? And that we think even a, 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 on, on top of that conversation, what does it mean for the collective group's needs um, to be prioritized over that of any one individual? Speaking of access needs, closed captioning is enabled. You just have to toggle it on if you'd like to use it. Depending on your version of Zoom, you might see the live transcript closed captioning um, icon. If not, look for the more dot 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 and choose show subtitles or subtitles if you want to turn them off. Uh, so what is Brain Club? Um, if, you're, if you're new, uh, Brain Club is our weekly education program for purposes of demonstrating all brains belongs approach to neuroinclusive culture, for purposes of shifting broader community awareness of neurodiversity and of the issues that are of importance to the neurodivergent community. Um, this is a way of uh, hopefully um, promoting new ways of thinking and being and so that then we all go out into the rest of our lives um, and transform culture because now we've shifted um, what we can um, demand and expect. While we hope that this is a place where you'll feel safe right from the very first time um, and that this is a place that you'll feel supportive, uh, this is not in fact a support group. This is not for medical or mental health advice. It's not a support group. It's not a place to make personal or individualized requests um, or address individualized needs. Um, it's also not a neurodivergent affinity space. It's a place for everyone to come and learn. So we invite you to listen, to learn, to observe what a neuroinclusive space can look like and, some, and how some of the issues that you hear um, in tonight's panel um, connect, if at all, to your life. There's no one right way to participate here at Brain Club. You can have your video on or off. And even if it's on, we don't expect anything of you. We certainly don't need you to sit still or look at the camera or anything like that. Um, so feel free to walk or move or fidget or stim or eat or take breaks or whatever else needs doing. Uh, we will pause twice throughout tonight for discussion. And during that time, you can use mouth words or the chat um, or emoticons or anything else that uh, uh, during during discussion. Um, although there's no pressure to do that. Observation is a valid form of participation here. In addition to affirming all aspects of identity, um, this is a program oriented around the collective community coming together. That's exactly what the topic of tonight's discussion will be about. That's a visual support to remind me to open the chat, which Zoom always shuts off um, as soon as I go into sh uh, share screen mode. Um, so that's the chat um, and uh, how how it works, uh, especially if you've been away for Brain Club for a while. Welcome back. Um, in October, we launched a, a new format, Brain Club 2.0, based on community feedback. And we have a, a committee, a steering committee of uh, community moderators um, who have developed uh, this format. And uh, we were, it's been about a month of this format. Um, so it's a 45 minute program. I'm going to briefly um, introduce uh, our, our, our presentation. And um, out of respect to the panelists, the chat will be turned off during the presentation. You'll hear part one of the panel discussion, and then we'll pause for about five minutes uh, for questions or comments, and then we'll watch the second half. It's not really 16 minutes and 10 minutes. It's close to that. It's like somewhere in between that. Um, it's maybe maybe like twelve or thirteen minutes, then a pause, then maybe twelve minutes after that. Uh, that's what I that's what I was saying at, at the beginning that I forgot to do. I forgot to make a new graphic for this, so um, good enough. 
Um, so some strategies, Lizzie, if you can put in the chat um, some ideas for how to set up your space and some things to kind of have around, because sometimes it can be hard to keep track of your comments um, while the chat is off. Um, so, you know, uh, feel free to, to record it for yourself or type it or write it or even type into the chat box without sending it um, just so that you don't have to tax your brain to remember what you wanted to say. All right. Um, so uh, continuing our November theme um, on learning old rules. Um, but before we begin, um, uh, oh, that's awesome, Weaver. That's great. Um, Weaver, Weaver is uh, hearkening to one of the, I don't even know if that's the right word, um, using the suggestion of doing, doing PT exercises uh, during the chats off. That's wonderful. I love it. Um, so just an update, we're in week two of All Brains Belongs Bridging the Gaps campaign. This is a campaign about spreading awareness of neuroinclusive culture and about our mission to make life better for people with all types of brains. Um, it is also a, uh, a way of um, uh, raising support for our free public community programs, Kid Connections and Brain Club. Um, you know, Brain Club, of course, being one of our first community programs uh, it, it, in, in, in January. It'll be three years of Brain Club, if you can uh, imagine it. So it's, you know, started off as quite a simple idea, but it's really about people coming together and shifting, shifting and reimagining what's possible. Um, so, so if you have capacity to support the campaign, we would be grateful for your support. Um, and another way of supporting the campaign is to spread the word about the campaign to, to, to anyone and everyone, um, to let folks know what we're doing and what we're up to. Thank you for your support. And uh, we're 57% um, toward, toward our goal. Um, and once we, once we reach 30,000, it actually becomes 60,000. Um, thanks to a generous matching gift from an ABB supporter. Um, so thank you. Thank you to our community. All of our community programs are uh, run uh, uh, completely dependent upon the generosity of our community. All right, tonight's topic, balancing individual and collective needs. Um, you know, I think that um, when we talk about building a world that works for everyone, um, it's the idea that if we're not shifting to that of thinking about the collective, um, we really um, are missing a huge part of what it takes to build a world that works for everyone. Um, so um, when we think about individual um, uh, uh, perspective taking or individual conflict or individual communication. Even when we talk about the double empathy problem, um, which is a term coined by uh, Dr. Damian Milton, um, an autistic social scientist talking about um, when there's a mismatch of worldview, a mismatch of communication style, that's when we're gonna have breakdowns. And that's even still thinking about that of, 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 of individual to individual. We're really even further zooming out here. And what we're gonna hear, to, we're gonna hear tonight um, from members of our Brain Club 2.0 steering committee. First off, reflecting on um, what, what the first month of Brain Club 2.0 has been like from their point of view. And uh, love, love, to, love to hear uh, when we open for discussion um, what, what, what you've all observed, um, but also zooming in on this topic of like, what does it really mean to shift to that of the collective? So um, let me... Um, I don't mean to interrupt. I just was wondering how you make your um, face come up. Like, I, I, can you guys see my face? Yeah. So at the bottom of your toolbar, you might see something that kind of maybe looks like a video camera. It might be second from the left. But I can try a trick. How about does something pop up on your screen? I just clicked yep. the. Oh, perfect! There we go. Thank you. All right, good teamwork. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna play this video, and after about twelve to fifteen minutes, we will stop for discussion. And during that time, we're going to shut off microphones and shut off the chat. And without further ado, here is the video. What is Brain Club 2.0? Like, what, like, why are we, um, you know, like zooming out, really identifying the core 
values, the format that makes the most sense to deliver education and broker these alliances to try to change culture, the Brain Club experience we are looking to offer the community. Brain Club as more of a classroom setting, you know, um, um, and less of a less of a support group. In a lot of ways, this is social justice and social change. Um, like the purpose why we're here is to sort of figure out, like to look look at to take a big picture look at 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 um, what's you know what's happening to um, the neurodivergent community at large, or what's happening around some of these issues that affect the neurodivergent community, and 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 an, and an, an alliance building space to actually where I could actually be effective about creating social change, not just bitching about what's wrong. Yeah, you reminded me as you were talking about that of all of the times that I say, like, we all have trauma leaking out of our ears, but it's our responsibility for each of us to have our own washcloth to mop it up. And so, like, when we carry that around, it's taking care of myself over here. And the accountability for knowing our own trauma in relationship with people we do know and in people with people we don't know and in the context of groups um, is really, really important that there is a responsibility to know yourself, but also that makes you more powerful in the space, even if you don't feel powerful in the space. And then it allows that all of our power to come together to change the world in a good way. And I think that that really is that shift from the individual to that of the collective. And so it's the, um, the idea that part of um, neural inclusive space, um, which, you know, it's kind of radical. Um, it's radical. The idea that we would all decide that we're going to do all this work. Um, we're gonna, you know, find a way to be in the space without infringing upon the access needs of other people so that we can all belong in the space. If this were a therapeutic space, um, it would be, you know, we'd have uh, the, the benefits of longitudinal follow-up and like, you know, wraparound support. We'd have a different kind of relationship because we don't have that because we have a, um, a, a fluctuating group new people coming, um, you know, different levels of cultural understanding, not shared vocabulary. Um, every, mo most of, most of at any given time, most people having relational trauma, like there has to, because we're, we're not going to have the follow-up. We're going to have like this one point in time, Brain Club is this one point in time. Um, it's like you have this, almost this artificiality, like you're exposing people to, maybe some radical ideas about neuroinclusive space, but you also have these like um, uh, overly, um, I don't know, like these overly protective guardrails that allow for, or, or that acknowledge that we have transient people coming to Brain Club each week um, who we don't have longitudinal relationships with. And so that's why we say it's an education space. It's not a therapeutic space. We're not going to engage with your relational trauma. And, 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 and I think to make the kind of shift where someone says something that reminds someone of their relational trauma, now they're activated in order to get to a place where that's neutral. That's a, that's, that's, that's a therapeutic type of work that we're not going to be engaging with at Brain Club. And so we're really limited. I mean, I think that in a group medical appointment context, that's, that's in many ways different than Brain Club. Brain Club, I think, has to have this, um, these guardrails, and yet I am concerned about projecting like a rigidity or a, like an artificially intense, you know, this is how we do the thing, take it or leave it. Like, yeah, that's true. And it doesn't necessarily like accurately project our values that are more clearly expressed in our other programs. I tried to do a group for five years where I didn't take the precautions that All Brains Belong is taking and it didn't work. So I think you really need, I think, I think the precautions that we're taking to expose people at the same time we're saying there are these other ways of being, there's these other ways of thinking and we can bring each other along and build this culture and go deeper and deeper over time. There's also this place where we sort of have to, where we have to provide people a lot of protection and the exposure has to be gradient, gradiated and gradual. Like here's where I would point to the power of the collective 
in the just the mirror neurons that we're providing for everyone i come to the space to get calmer and it works for me um and that's everyone else's mirror neurons you know working on me to calm me that's amazing I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. And like, that would be, you know, when, when, when we vision casted Brain Club 2.0, we didn't talk about that per se, but that reminds me of like feedback we got from a community member a few years ago that I play video clips of all the time of like, when I leave Brain Club, I have more energy than when I first arrived. Yeah. Like that, we want to charge people. We want to regulate people. Um, and I, 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 I think that this new structure um, of restricting access to the chat has contributed to being able to get back to that space. And yet it also feels, it feels a little off to me still. Especially, I think what's really tricky for me is a newcomer, a newcomer who comes and like hasn't been on the journey with us to know like the story of how we got here. And we could say at the beginning, which they may miss the intro for all I know, but we may say that, you know, this is a new format, you know, developed by the community. Um, but they're, they're like, what is this? Like, what is this? What do you mean I can't interact with people? Um, and yet there are so many programs that you don't like interact with the facilitator directly or the presenters directly like you just watch you just watch and you hopefully learn something participation is welcome just like within the parameters of what we can manage as a free community program prioritizing you know what is the priority and what i've heard is the priority is that this is more of a learning experience i think what's happening in my experience is it's just not enough time for people to really sink into what did I just see? So processing time, it's like they've got a very short time to ask a question or comment. They don't have the chat to flush that out. And so then there's like this sort of they're more of an empty space. I need to do a brain club on how to, you know, how to, how to write down your questions or how to save your questions until like you can bring a piece of paper with you, write them down, you know, right. type them in your remind, type them in your reminders on your iPhone. Um, you know, those kinds of things. I mean, we might need to, you know, so, so something to keep your questions as they come up, so you can keep a record of your questions as they come up, so you have them for when the chat comes on. <clears throat> I think that the people who are, like, I just felt like really powerful by Jay, what Jay shared last week and that whole experience, like that to me feels like an example of what Brain Club is about. Here's how I've taken what I've learned at Brain Club, and now here's something that really can work, and we can stand up for ourselves, and we can get our needs met. And here's how. Um, I think that there's some people who I've noticed are really got it, like really saying, like, "Oh, I didn't realize the impact. I didn't realize I was doing the thing that you've been talking about for months." Mm. And so it's like what I know about you, Mel, is like when you tell us something, you'll give us a visual, you'll give us, you know, and it's a repeated message that has that consistency so then we're like it, it for me that that can that repetitive information in the different forms helps it sink in in so many different levels between you and sarah the whole um operation around the stress response what's happening physiologically like the combination of the two of you has literally changed the nature of how i feel about myself how i move is given me more skill and space um to really know what's going on because i have a nervous system of like taking care of the whole like my body always wants to like harmonize the group so i do get impacted like in my legs so now i know like oh you're impacted like maybe turn your camera off for a few minutes like settle back like i've been able to like learn about those signs like signals of how i want to participate and be heard and known in the space yeah and i think that like my nervous system because I feel like a deep responsibility to protect the collective, I get very dysregulated when I see the collective being impacted and I harbor the values that have been discussed today about like, I do wanna hear what you have to say. I actually really do. It's just, um, 
we can't do it now because the collective's being impacted and I can't do it any other time because I don't have time. So like that tension is what I hold and what I get dysregulated by. Me, I know that about you, Mel. Like I know what your anti-core value is. I know, like I know the impact, I can see it, but even though you're not really expressing it, like I have that because I know you in so many different contexts. But if people didn't know that, they may not know the impact they're even having on the group of how it's even being facilitated. Like what I have been looking at is, is, well, I don't think it was that person's intention to power over in that moment. I think they were just excited and wanted to share. Or I don't think it was um, this person's intent to harm, but it was collateral damage from feelings that they were feeling. And so I, I wonder if it's worth reframing it instead of behavior and more around like, these are the intentions that we as moderators don't want to allow into the space and why. I think that's really important, Liz. And I do think that there is I don't know, I feel a responsibility to also be considering impact on the group or um, on the, 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 the collective, um, you know, and on the program and the people who run the program. So I think that like, even when I, when I discuss conflicting access needs with my seven year old, um, I think it's really important that they understand that you know, their words and their actions have impact. They may or may not, you know, first off, you know, when we have full access to our cortex, you can choose to engage in words or behavior. If you're if you're too dysregulated that you don't have access to that, these things happen automatically. So it's not an intention. It's a, it's an automatic limbic words or actions. And even so, words and actions have impact on other people. And um, you, you, you may or may not do anything with that information, but I think it's important to have that information. I don't know what other people think about, about that. Like, I think like, you know, if, if there's pure intention, but we have like, like the, the, your point about the collateral damage, that's, that's the impact. Like, I think we do need to engage with collateral damage. Amy. And, and I got something after Amy. So, so. Sarah, can you hold it or do you want to go first? Go for it. Okay. Go for it. Um, like I think about myself having a meltdown. Like I'm at the airport, my bag's not coming the way I want it to come. The pressure builds, the pressure builds. I'm having to pace. I'm having to start rocking. I'm getting upset. I'm, my voice is getting louder. I'm like looking at checking Weston. Weston's like, we're okay. We're okay. You know, but there have been points where I couldn't, you know, control that, or I couldn't, it would just like build and build is like what I've learned here at All Brains Belong from so many people. Like what is actually happening in those moments? You know, when I would come to the meetings when I was having a really rough time and I would um, come and I would like project that other people were dysregulated and I'd get off and, and then Weston would point out like, Amy, you were dysregulated when you went to that meeting. So you're not recognizing your own dysregulation. How do we recognize that? How do we understand like foot on the gas or, you know, uh, how do we how do we bring that into the learning? The if we're t if we're doing a classroom, how do we first set off saying what actually is happening in these moments for folks? What are some things that could happen? What are the signs being recognized? If if you're starting to share and you notice that the facilitators gently and kindly trying to, you know, that might be a signal to just back back away, not in the sense of doing something wrong, but maybe recognizing of like, oh, do I want to continue down the road I'm going in? You know, um, those are things that we can talk about and 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 say share experience. And I think that would be so important for so many people who could then bring that into other spaces in their life and start recognizing those cues so that they are creating more safety for themselves, not from being admonished, but from like having a fuller understanding of what's happening for them. Absolutely. And the idea that self-monitoring, what am I, how am I doing in this task is a complex executive function. And so you may not have access to that. So external cues, like looking at the facilitator, like look, if you're on Zoom, for example, you look down at the time on your phone or your computer and you realize, oh, wow, I've been talking for four minutes without taking a 
breath. You know, what, what, what is that like when other people do that when I'm in a short time together with people? So those kinds of cues I think are important. Sarah. Um, yeah, I probably was talking for more than four, four minutes the last time without taking a breath. Um. <laughs> this idea of impact of participation, not in like a self-conscious, you know, you need to comply with behavioral norms kind of way, but like, you know, I, I, the way I want to be in a community of other people is I do want other people to participate. I don't want my participation to impact other people's ability to participate. So if we're saying there are these discrete, like two, five minute blocks of, of questions and discussion, there needs to be a little bit of um, reflection on um, what those five minutes look like. And so I, I, as the facilitator, either need to use discretion on who I call on um, or we need to invite the community to be reflecting on. I know there's only five minutes. Um, and and if, I'm, if I'm a person who participates a lot in Brain Club and participates quickly without a pause, that may not be creating space for other people to participate who need more processing time, who need a certain period of waiting before they kind of get up the nerve or the you know the motor mm -hmm. plan to initiate what do, you, what do you both think about that there's like a there's a pragmatic that feels like a good place to pause um and in fact i want to try something different i want us to just take a minute where none of us are talking and just sort of reflect on what you saw. Um, did, did anything surprise you? Um, did you? What did you agree with? What did you disagree with? Just take a minute. And we can hear from a couple of folks. Chat or out loud. I think I turned my chat on. Uh, give I? it a try. It should work. Give it a try. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Um, hi, my name is Gabriel. Um, I uh, am a mechanic, father of three, awesome wife, great support structure. Um, I had an accident. I fell and hit the back. I've had a lot of concussions through my life. I was a semi-pro skateboarder always into sports like that and this last time that i hit my head it i guess it was the straw that broke the camel's back because after well i hit my head and then i tried to you know tough guy my way through it and i went back to work and i ended up dropping an engine on my head i can't hear you yeah, Gabriel, I'm just going to I'm going to redirect you a little bit. Um I'm so sorry that that happened. Um I want I'm uh, sorry, I'm just get, trying to get yeah. an idea of the group. Yeah, exactly. What... Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, yeah. I think that yeah, and I think that um uh one of one of the things that um when 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 folks are first new to Brain Club, I think many people would tell you at their first Brain Club, it's like hard to know what this even is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm so I'm just so glad you're here. Um, because Thank I you. think that I think that when you know any you know we, we move through the world and we can kind of just you know it's hard to it's hard to know where we fit in, right? And so this is a place where everyone can fit in. I very much and, like that. Yeah, and I'm so glad I'm so glad you're here. And so I really appreciate you introducing yourself. Thanks. Thank for you for here. having me. Absolutely. Sierra. Yeah, I just wanted to um comment on something that I think was identified in the end of that last um video section of kind of being at that intersection of impulsivity in a brain that's really impulsive and a brain that also has slow processing time. Um and how weird it feels to be at that intersection, but also how that affects communication um, and, you know, speaking with automatic speech before my brains actually come up with what I actually want to say, like whatever that looks like. Um, I just think it's a really, really interesting intersection to explore and um, really comes out in communication. 
Absolutely. And that connects to what Weaver shared in the chat as well. Um, Weaver says that both recognizing that we get excited and it's thrilling to be in groups with values like this, and it's really hard to read cues in that state. Um, so it's just, I think, naming it, right? Like when I'm excited or when I'm upset, it makes it really hard for my brain to take in cues. It just is. It's a neutral statement. It's There's no judgment. It just is. And an awareness of that, I think, is the first step to kind of just like understanding what happens out there in the universe. And that this is a place um, where when that happens, which is inevitable, um, that we sort of have a lens to understand what we think we might be seeing. So that's what I'd say about that. Uh, Heather in the chat says, at first I was kind of sad about the chat going away because I really like talking to everyone. You mean like kind of throughout while the video is playing. Um, I really like hearing y'all's reasons for changing it. I think this is great and I really enjoyed being fully engaged with the video rather than being distracted by the chat. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's interesting um, uh, as, as our community hearing committee kind of in, uh, first brought brought to attention feedback that had been gathered by panelists, that some folks were feeling um, disrespected when there was like a side chat in the chat box going on while the video was playing. And that really was the impetus for us, like thinking about doing something different. And yet it was still new to me to think that my, my brain could both pay attention to video and chat at the same time. I thought I was, but I was not. And I'm really like in even in other programs, I've been really trying to like slow it down and pick one and being more intentional that way. Um, and last last uh, chat comment I'll read for now, and then we'll go back to the second half of the video. Um, Monique says, I appreciate what Amy was saying about needing to see new behaviors and patterns modeled a few times and in different modes. I'm learning a new way of being here. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, Monique. It's okay. really hard. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay, Gabriel. Go ahead. Um, it, I my one of my main issues that I've had I have is I don't remember anything. Like I have yeah. a really hard time remembering things. So when I'm watching the seminar or your the you know the video, I'm okay. I'm like not remembering what she said prior so like i'm kind of stuck like i'm i'm trying to remember what she said so i can understand what she's saying and it's kind of a perpetual moving forward that way like i couldn't tell you a word she said in those videos totally i have two quick ideas and i think that maybe i i would imagine that what i'm about to say i'm hoping also helps other people because you're not the only one for sure um, so one wondering that I have, oh, so thank you, Sierra. I think your your comment in the chat is better than anything I was gonna say. Sierra's pointing out that all the sessions are recorded so that you can have access to watch the whole thing back oh. later. Yeah, so cool. so if, you, if you're registered like through the Brain Club website, it'll go out in about a week. So that's okay. one. Cool. The other thing is um, after my brain injury, I found that, um, those captions helped me. I don't have a, um, it's not a, a, a hearing um, uh, issue per se, although my um, auditory processing is challenged, um, but closed captions were not something that I had used earlier in my life. And it helps me tremendously. And I don't know if you've or others have tried it, but it might be something to try and see yeah. if that helps with the auditory processing. And then the second thing, um, if if this would be supportive and I don't know if, you know, like scribbling notes. Or I've covered my house notes. in whiteboards. My wow, house totally. is covered in whiteboards. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I nail, they're nailed up in every room. Totally. So if you, you know, if you had a whiteboard with you um, or, you know, something so that you don't have to, you know, have to um, uh, keep it, keep it in yeah. your brain. Yeah. Thanks, Remember Gabriel. every little thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Thank um, you for everybody saying welcome. I don't know how to use the chat yet. So sorry. 
<laughs> this is this this is great. There's no right way to participate. Yeah, All right, here we go. I'm gonna get us back to the video. How do we implement what, what? How do we implement this? And how do we? How do you implement radical values in a way that your audience and the way that the people who who um. And in a way that the, the the people who are coming understand what you are doing, and and ha and are resourced for what's going to happen in the space. And so I think in a public in a public uh, facing space, there's like you can't assume that people, especially newcomers, are going to be resourced with the with the the viewpoint that. Uh, especially like something like I expressed, like, I mean, it, as much as I believe that, okay, like, you know, uh, you know, powering over or, or going to fight response or having a meltdown just expresses really strong values. Um, I can't assume that, that, I mean, I can't assume that people are resourced to handle that. How do we even talk about behavior, knowing that so many members of our community, if not the majority of our community, has been harmed by the paradigm of behaviorism and behavioral compliance? It's a really good question. I, um, for me, when someone's dysregulated, to me, it means they need care. To me, when someone's dysregulated, it means that, um, like there's certain level of pressure, like we're talking about like sympathetic activation, but I think there's an importance to define what we mean by regulation. I think like in the new year, you hear like, oh, come join this like, you know, retreat and reset your nervous system or, you know, get get regulated or, you know, all these kinds of things that is just not, it's just, it's like, it's just BS, right? Because if we actually fundamentally understand what's happening within the nervous system, we know, like Sarah would say, like we're always regulating, right? And and those of us who have dysautonomia or other health issues, like you've taught me and Hannah Bloom's taught me, you know, it's like we're way overshooting and compensating. And and in that bigness of the feeling and the pressure and the the acting out and the meltdowns and the vulnerability when we when we talk about behaviors and that's how it's framed in the school system body things that I do to suppress my like actions and feelings and behaviors is that word is that the word we even want to use to define what's happening in 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 brain club of why we're setting these community agreements and how do we reframe that in a sense of care versus exclusion or isolation or go go take care of yourself and then come back. I mean, I can't tell me how many times someone says, why don't you go take care of yourself and then you can come back. And that for me is like, it's so hard. And I'm all about saving children in the school systems that are like not welcomed because of their behaviors or not welcomed because of their way their brains work. Like when I go to fight, it, the same way that anybody else goes to flight or freeze fight is my default and 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 like and it's my default when something is really 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 effing important to me and so the way you can tell something is important the more extreme my reaction the more extreme i'm in fight the more important to me you can tell the more I, the more i am fighting you for for airtime the more you can tell that this thing it matters to me, and so and so the response, if you actually effing care about me, is the response is I can tell something is really incredibly important to me, so important to me you can't even hear anything else going on, I, you know, and and I need to know what that is, and I want to know what that is, and I want to be your ally in getting you space to express that. Sarah, one of the many things I appreciate you, uh, with many things I appreciate about you, is that you are modeling language. Um, about your own access needs and how the person you're interacting with can best meet your access needs. When I am dysregulated, and this means I really care about something, this is what I want you to say. What a gift, right? So the, the person you're building a relationship with. And I remember I was in a group with you once and you taught me that like, what I really want from you is to acknowledge my emotions before you say anything else. 
oh shit, of course I want to do that. Of course I want to do that. Like, because my brain like moved to another thing because, you know, executive functioning. And that was so helpful. And that taught me so much. And I carry that with me in every group that I'm in. And when we are in a classroom space, I don't think that that is the same as one-on-one -on -one building a relationship with an individual. So if if, if there's a group of 50 people and the 50 people come and they all say that they have, this is what I want you to say to me and this is what I want you to do and this is what I want you to provide me, like extra materials, I want your staff to, 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 to prepare extra materials because this will help me better access Brain Club, like conflicting access needs. Like we're like seeing patients all day. This is like a free thing we do, like in between seeing patients. But yeah. I think we also have to, we have to address, and like my energy is coming out here of like, and that's why we talk about, this is about the collective. This is what we're offering. And we'd love for you to participate in what we're offering. Um, but we can't do anything else. We're drowning. Yes. Like in the moment when we like the like when when there was the conversation where like no you know all brains belong but all behaviors do not like in that moment it felt like well that clearly is the level of clarity that makes the world make sense and then like you think about it some more and you think about it some more and you're like oh that's that's kind of gross um so like how do you name how do you name that I mean like I think that priorities are constantly shifting perspectives are constantly shifting every time you have an interaction with someone i mean like your perspective changes because you learn from the person and the feedback that you get etc um but but also like i mean i think what, what, what the way you just said this amy makes me think like what this all is is conflicting access needs so it's like naming the access needs and figuring and, and just naming them maybe like that's all that gets done because i think that the it's it's um you know we could talk about we want to avoid like behavioral principles of compliance, but then like, you know, by disabling the chat, by externally restricting the behavior so that it cannot happen, like, is that okay? Is that actually okay? Because if that's okay, if we decided as a, as, as a, a, a moderator team that that is okay, then I don't know that we even need behavioral guidelines. There's no opportunity for the behavior, the behavior that was violating the access needs of um, a, a large number of participants who gave feedback that their access needs were not being met and a um, uh, the majority of staff whose access needs um, were uh, not, not met um, in the setting of an unrestricted chat box. And I think the other thing too is like, when I talk every time, I just talked on Tuesday, I'm dysregulated when I talk because I'm like, I know I'm on video and, and my face turns red and, and I might not be acting out or breaking the rules, but I'm dysregulated. And part of it is like, I have to realize the dysregulation that I'm bringing. I have to recognize that other people's dysregulation because of my sensory sensitivities or because if someone's breaking the rule, that will dysregulate me. If I see somebody else breaking the rule, I'm like, what do we do? How are they going to like respond? How am I going to respond to that? We have to talk about the neurodivergent community and the sensitivities of how we've been treated, whether we've been masked or unmasked, identified early or late, it doesn't matter. And I think we have so many people in this community who have looked at this, who've studied it personally, professionally, and I'd love to be able to, to define that so people don't feel like they're getting in trouble at Brain Club. Wow. wow. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, like, yeah, wow, exactly, wow. right? And like, it's like, it's shifting constantly. So um, what a, um, what a note to, to end up on. I think that you, you know, what I'm, what I'm hoping, or at least what stood out to me is just the complexities, the complexities of um, bringing a whole bunch of people together, some of whom know each other and some of whom don't and having this primary objective of providing education and like all of the variables that that, that play out into, in, into a group. So anyway, I'm happy to take uh, one comment or question from someone we haven't heard from yet. If anybody has any comments or questions before we wrap up. Uh, 
has anybody made a comment? Um, I just want to give give a little bit more time for processing time, just because I want to make sure that um, someone, anyone we haven't had a chance to hear from yet. Otherwise, we're already two minutes over. Oh, thank you, Jay. That's great. Okay, so we'll take Jay's comment, and then we'll wrap up. Um, Amy's comment about rule breaking causes dysregula causing dysregulation really resonates with me or the fear that I'm breaking a rule or a social norm in a space. I feel like I'm um, anticipating others disapproval or distress and Heather says me too. Of course, how could you not feel that way because of all of the other spaces that have explicitly made us feel that way, right? And so it's really, it's like unlearning that in, 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 there could be an environment where having a community agreement about how we're going to be in space together, um, that like you can show up, um, and that you know disapproval or or anticipated disapproval, like it it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. And so I think uh, what a uh, that's that's a great note to wrap up on because this really is about like reimagining uh, some 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 of 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 whom um you know that was not a word that i meant because i'm reading a chat um um so i think that uh you know uh the space that we are endeavoring to co-create together is in many times something we've never seen before um so it's all a all a grand um experiment and as 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 uh, and, th and thank you weaver um, yeah, there's there's so many folks who are, you know, coming coming at this together and reimagining and, you know, trying trying some things and retrying some things and, you know, constantly trying to like be taking in feedback and like just being, you know, nimble and flexible and responsive and like, ooh, that didn't work. We're going to try again. So thank you. Thank you for trying, trying all the things with us. Uh, so with that, um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being part of this conversation. And uh, we look forward look forward to seeing you next week. Next week, um, we will be uh, revisiting a topic about neuro-inclusive uh, culture at home um, with an asynchronous panelist presentation from Hannah Bloom, um, an occupational therapist on our professional advisory board and who was our uh, founding board chair. So uh, we we look forward look forward to uh, to seeing you then. Thanks, everybody.